Hello, Dr. Adele. This is my um, experiment I wanted so badly to show you. So what we have is we have an alternating voltage source from the wall. Uh, the step-down transformer is over there on that power strip. Uh, this apparatus here is a television set that I'm not using anymore. Um, so it comes in and it goes across this secondary, which is 22 volt secondary, 22 volt secondary, 100 volt, 100 volt, 120 volt primaries. It goes across from here to there and out. It goes to the light bulb, light bulb back to the AC source. This here is a decade box variable resistance um, voltage source. Now notice this voltage source is DC, which so what it does is it leaves the battery and it goes to this primary, the high winding primary, large larger turns on this side than this side by a factor of five goes from here to there. Notice how it's wired inverse so the back EMF from the AC of these two cancels. From here all the way back past the resistance box and back to the battery. Now the power is actually on and the light bulb is off. But as we increase the current, so I'm going to do is increase the current by turning down the resistance of the decade box. And when we get to a certain threshold a light light see that's 10 ohms so in other words pretty significant resistance I mean decrease um, so DC is flowing in the primary only AC is flowing in the secondary there's no AC in the primary because I cancel out the induced voltage by transformer action and look what happens now so as I slowly increase the resistance so now it's hundred ohms and you can see the light bulb has dimmed and we can reverse the process and we can continue doing this indefinitely. So I'm using a DC waveform to effectively modulate AC. I wish I could make an audio. See, if you take it down too far, like you bring it all the way over here, it's sometimes it loses its light and it won't. You have to turn it back down to get the light bulb heated up to get it going. But, um, by simply modulating this dial here and controlling the DC current flowing in this in this primary because they're wired inversely so plus and minus cancel out the voltage that would or otherwise be induced by the step up action of these transformers and these act like in variable inductors these two coils here and in effect what we have is an amplifier I mean it's an amplifier in the sense that a small control signal which is here so in other words, this light bulb is probably taking half an amp. And this one has a voltage of 100 ohms. And you can see the knob there. 6 volts. So that would only be about what, 6 divided by 100, 60 milliamps. That's not enough to light this. And not to mention this is a 12 volt light bulb and this is only a 6 volt. DC supplied. DC can't go from one to the other on a transformer. How I think it works is the direct current modulates the permeability of these iron cores and then it varies the inductive reactance of these two. So in effect we have an amplifier. This is the larger input power. This is the tinier control signal. These do the work and then this is your result. I would love to be able to make a custom high frequency audio amplifier using this methodology but um, I don't know how, but when current's flowing, it gets brighter and brighter. See, I just went from 10 ohms to 4,700 ohms, see, between there and there. And I was able to prove this earlier that it was a switch, but what's also cool is it has this linear gradient. So you can go from dim to back to bright and back to very dim without too much terrible difficulty. And the interesting thing about this is it's using a variable inductance. So energy is not being lost to heat as in a variable resistance, but it's being transferred back and forth via the effect of inductance. And I think I'm going to leave it here. So I'm just going to turn it off. A little bit of a delay, but it works. I mean, it really does control the signal. All right, well, that's it. Thank you. I um, hope we can figure out how this thing works and write a very decent paper on it, the magnetic amplifier.